Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Cape Rugby TV and uh, nice to have you along. It has been a busy, busy, busy week. Uh, the Community Cup Challenge launched, of course, last week. It was the uh, draw for the uh, B divisions, if you want to call it that, or the second tier. And uh, the uh, Varsic Shield is now up and running. Uh, the HSB7s, the Blitzbocker, did so fantastically well. And, of course, a lot of rugby coming up over the weekend, including the West Bank 7s. And uh, next week, it's Bob Skinstad in his Cape Town 10. So lots of, lots of activity and lots of uh, highlights and interviews for us to bring you tonight. On the show with me tonight, and long time overdue of having him on the show, is uh, Ben Teron, the head of rugby at Western Province Rugby, uh, uh, or at least the head of referees at Western Province. Hello, Ben, come here. Thank you, JP. Lekker om hier te wees vir die eerste keer en al die luisteraars aan buiten kan, vir die wat nou nog nie weet hoe lyk het nie, nou moet uh Dat is allemaal weer wie die ouders wat zaterdag voor hulle skytsheid verstuur, waarom hulle altijd so gelukkig is. Ja, jy sê ou wat waar die ouders een bykie vonger wees en hulle wil weet wat aangaan met die skytsrechters. So ons gaan met, lekker met jou gesels van aand oor, wat aangaan met, um, met die skytsrechters en wat sy plannen julle het. En ek weet, daar is nog een paar dinge wat daar uitkom. And then of course, the no strangers to the Cape Rugby TV panel. And of course, uh, the captain of the Cape Rugby TV 7 side, uh, the supermodel himself, uh, Morgan Newman. Hello, Morgan. How's it, Jeffs? How are you going? Yeah, good to be back. Thanks. It's been a while. So, yeah, I mean, stayed away for a while, but it's good to be back and I've missed it. So, it's, yeah, I, I, I told the viewers out there on a Wednesday night. All that uh, behind the scenes action keeping you busy, yeah? Yeah, there's lots happening. Eh? The Cape Rugby TV team is the talk of the town at the moment. So, yeah, I'm very, very busy. There's also Community Cup uh, preparation which is taking place. So, no, there's busy, busy and rugby's uh, full, full swing again, you know. So, looking forward to the season. You're playing at Hamilton's again this year? Yeah, I'll be at Hamilton's again this season, playing Community Cup. So if I get picked, I'll be I'll be playing. But otherwise, yeah, we're training. Preseason has started. We started on the 14th, and things are going well. We're running like Trojans and uh, doing. I all love sorts the way of, I know. love the way that you guys always say like you know if I get picked. I mean, you'll get like Skulk Burgos, captain of the Springbok side or whatever, and they say so. How's this game going to go on Saturday? The team selection is not out yet, so they'll say well, of course, it depends on if I get picked. But you know, he's going to be in the team. <laughs> yeah, look, uh, <laughs> you never know who's watching. I think Mullis Mullis is keeping an eye on the show. Then I don't want to be picking myself. So yeah, I've got to perform during preseason and during the preseason games and at Cape Town Tens, obviously next week and if things go well then yeah hopefully I'll make the side. Right folks yeah so as I mentioned lots of activity um, over the last couple of days and uh, of course uh, most of that activity happened over the weekend at the Strand Sevens or at least the Strand Pioneers Sevens tournament. It was a great tournament we spoke about this from last year already and a number of the clubs from uh, all around the uh, Western Province um, club rugby structures entered into the Strand Pioneers Sevens and the fans went out in their droves. Let's quickly look at some of the results from the teams that entered there and uh, Cape Rugby TV side was uh, first up against Strand Pioneers. It did not go well. We lost there 24-17. Um, so well done to Strand Pioneers for beating the Cape Rugby TV 7 side in the second. Then unfortunately, All Saints did not pitch up on the day. So Cape Rugby side then had a bye. And then Cape Rugby took on um, St. George's, uh, managed to beat them 7-5. That was a very close game. And then, of course, uh, up against Strand United, 12-5 win there. And then in the finals, it was uh, the uh, Cape Rugby side against the Zebras. So well done there to um, the uh, guys that entered. That was, of course, just the run of uh, the um, Cape Rugby uh, results as it, as it went. And then, of course, uh, if we look at some of the other results there from the, the Pioneers, um, Sevens, of course, uh, th this is more now the quarterfinals and the semis and the finals. The Zebras uh, beating... This is now the Western Province Zebras beating the Marty's 24 points to 5. St. George's uh, went down to Macassar 12-10. Strand 7-5 over Helderberg. Uh, you saw this result earlier on where uh, Cab Rugby beat Strand United 17 points to 5. Then in the semi-finals, um, the uh, Western Province Zebras beating Macassar 26-7. And then CRTV 12-5 over Strand. And then the final. Uh, the Western Brahmin Zebras uh, beating the Cape Rugby TV side, 32 points to 7. But if you look at that there, Morgs, all in all, um, let's talk about the, the tournament. It was a great day. Lots of people out there. Um, started early in the morning, finished late in the evening, but it was well organized. No, I mean, I, I, you know, I'm happy to catch um, Tariq van der Ross, you know, throughout the day, just chatting about his experience of the day. And I think uh, there was an excess of 2,000 people that came through the gates. And what an unbelievable vibe, you know. I mean, from what it was, 9 o'clock in the morning when everyone, the coaches and the managers had to be there, till the evening, I think it was half past six the final was, you know. The, the, the people kept coming. I think I think towards the final, the, the, the crowd got a little bit bigger. But yeah, just an unbelievable day to see all the clubs come down there and, you know, give it horns for... During preseason, obviously a lot of teams are using it as fitness for the up and coming season. Mm. So yeah, amazing to see all the clubs there. And you know, unfortunately, one or two clubs don't pitch up. But 
I mean, you know, with Cape Rugby TV being there, there's mileage for them. So I think they've lost out, if you want to say yeah, that. Yeah, I, I must say, it's very disappointing when a team doesn't arrive for a tournament because the other teams were hoping to play against those guys. But now, before we carry on with talking about Sevens, let's quickly show you some of the highlights from uh, the uh, Strand Pioneer Sevens. Oh, lots of fun. It's a beautiful day. Uh, yeah, things are looking good. Uh, all the games are on time and uh, yeah, we're excited. Things started, everything's running according to plan. Ten pioneers girls against St. George's girls. It was a big win. I'm happy for my team. We worked very hard. <laughs> Strand Pioneers and of course the Sevens is going on really strongly behind me uh, it looks like well it looks like Marty's is playing against um, uh, the Western Province Rugby Zebras at the moment so things progressing well lots of fans it looks like it's a great day out here at Abattoir Sports Field and this is what we want to see more club rugby more Sevens So, of course, those are some of the highlights of the Cape Rugby, at least not the Cape Rugby, I keep wanting to say that the Strand Pioneer Sevens, we're going to show you the highlight of the Cape Rugby TV Seven side uh, sort of tries and how the team went there. Our CRTV seven side, how the progression there. Um, but it was a, it was a great tournament. Morgs, lots of tries being scored there. Yeah, I mean that talent is unbelievable. You know, you it's, you know it's often for for a guy playing in Super League or whatever it is now for the new name. You know, you don't get to see the, the talented players that are out there. You know, week in and week out. So to see the best, quickest seven guys that are out there, you know, was really unbelievable. The skill set that the guys possessed. I mean, the wind was the wind picked up towards the, the latter end of the day, and it really. Um, you know, conditions weren't easy, but the guys still threw the ball around and they still scored some fantastic tries. So it's good to see. And, and you know, I think the level of rugby at the Western Province is, is extremely high. Ben, uh, there were a couple of referees out there that were also using the uh, Sevens uh, tournament as pre-season uh, fitness. And they weren't so sure if they were going to make it because it was a long day. Yeah, I think it's also good preparation, preparation for referees, um, you know, just to get the fitness up. See one or two of the more senior guys there. But the youngsters like Henny Heidenrich and uh, refereeing the yeah. uh, Jan Tolk and, and Daniel Fortain, provincial referee. Uh, it's just good as a guy's out there and it seems like it was quite enjoyable the day. How much does it help? How much does it help the referees to, to, to practice their skills in sevens? I mean, the, the, the rules are a little bit different and maybe, maybe you can elaborate for us because I think a lot of people sort of understand the, the difference maybe in the laws or rules of sevens and fifteens. Uh, well, JP, um, on the law side, of course, we talk about laws in rugby. Uh, it's um, it's more uh, difficult to actually referee the, the rock scenario because you want to, have, want to have more play. But then again, you can't just go do whatever you want and just think, oh, well, we want players to play more rugby and uh, and kill the law. So there's a fine line of dealing with that. Uh, but uh, on, on, on speed, is good for the referees for, 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 for testing their speed, keeping up with the game. Yeah. And then the other, other, other ones are just a small change with the kickoffs, you know, with the ball not traveling 10 meters. Or, they they come back for the for the free kicks and what, what do you hang on? Maybe just elaborate for us. What, is there a difference in the, in the law there for a for a for a free kick? It must travel ten yeah, meters. If the ball doesn't travel ten. All, all the all the areas that you usually have in fifty man rugby, 
where the teams will have choices at, at the kickoff uh, mistakes with a scrum or a re-kick or a line out, they will come back for free kicks. Okay, so and then the team scoring will kick off again uh, uh, and, and, and those things. But it's not it's not a big thing. It's just to give the the game a little bit more more, more flow. Yeah, just to keep it a lot quicker. Are you allowed to place kick? In I was wondering about this over the weekend when we watched the ACSBC sevens. Um, the Canadian team. Uh, had to, to, to win against um, Samoa, I think. Um, they had to just put one over the post. It was the last 10 seconds of the game and he had to take his kick. And I was wondering whether or not, because obviously there was going to be nothing after that, would he have been allowed to do a place kick if he wanted to, as no, opposed to a drop kick? No, unfortunately, it's only drop kicks. So you, no place kicks allowed. That's it, you better be able to drop <laughs> kick. Yeah, that's why it's a skill nowadays uh, on the top levels that, that the kick is actually... Uh, Putting a lot of time into the kicking uh, game, the drop kicks. drop kicks and poles. Of course, you know, just one of those kicks can either make you win or lose and go to the next round or not play anymore. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm more talking about, about drop kicks. Um, and now uh, you put you put this, the seven side, the Cape Rugby TV seven side together again the day before and even on the day you <laughs> managed to put a few people in there. Um, and we're going to go through we're going to go through the players that we've got uh, that we've that played in the um, in fact let's go to that slide now quickly let's see if we can just see the Cape Rugby TV team there because uh, I, I have to give credit to the guys that played there and of course the coach was Paul Delport um, Springbok Sevens player the manager Ishmael Dolly and uh, Morgan Newman the captain um, and then um, Snaz from Belleville uh, Clarence Hansen from Macassar Dennis Weller-Blaber from Mulnerton Talib Johnson from False Bay, Burton Erasmus from NNK, Bernard Titus Hands and Hearts, Angela Nelson from Marty, Zaire Islands, otherwise known as Kakalaki from SK Warmers, Tenswell Johnson from Salorians, Arno Johnson from Tigerberg, and Michael Murphy from Marty. So a nice uh, mixed bag of players there. Um, and these are highly talented players, Morks. Yeah, look, I mean, it's, uh, you know, I, but before, the, before I picked them, I, I must say I didn't really... You know, I wasn't too sure what, what, what we might get, but I mean, really, these are these are some of the top players. I mean, Eddie Jacobs, who joined us later in the day, was really extremely impressed with the, with the amount of talent that, that we had on display. You know, a guy like yeah. I saw a guy like Bernard Titus, um, I saw Ricky Peterson walk over to him and find out how old he was, because I mean, Bernard's only 20 years old now, and you know, playing uh, playing for hands and hearts and doing extremely well. So you know, he's a player. He also he kicked for poles. He did extremely well with the drop kicks. Talking about drop kicks. I mean, so no, 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 that's where I, that's actually where I was heading. If we talk about the drop kicks, because Kakalaki Zaire Island was slotting drop kicks from from the from the lines from from the wide out. Yeah, look, I mean, it's you know, it's, it's a skill that you don't see these players possess in 15s because you never drop kick in 15s unless you're the fly-off who drops yeah. into your pocket in the last minute of the game. So, you know, wingers, centers, all these guys who possess the skill, you'll never see it because of a 15-man game doesn't, doesn't really, you know, cater for it. But in 15, I mean, in sevens, it, you know, it becomes, it becomes evident, you know, and in the beginning, before the day started, I said to the Oaks, well, who's going who's gonna to kick for poles? And obviously, we had all the flowers put up their hands because they generally know how to kick for poles. And then Zaire put up his hand too. And obviously, Zaire being a senior guy, we gave it to him first. And the way he kicked all day, we couldn't, we couldn't take it away from him. Yeah, but, I mean, uh, that's what I was kind of yeah, on, focusing on here is Kakalaki. Is, he's got the step and he's got the speed and he's got the drop kick. I mean, this guy's really got a natural talent. No, he's got a full bag of tricks, you know. I mean, Zaire, <laughs> yeah, like you say, besides his step and you know, step and chip and all these kind of things. He possesses a drop kick, so there's no reason why, you know, the, the senior Springbok selectors and seven selectors of this world, Ricky and all of them, can't, can't look at a guy like that. You know, if a guy like Earl Rose can get back into the province sevens mix, there's no reason why a guy like Zaya can't do it either. Anyway, folks, uh, let's quickly take a look then at uh, some of the uh, highlights from the Cape Rugby TV seven side. Um, and and the, 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 the reason we talk about the Cape Rugby TV seven side so much, folks, is because it gives us an opportunity to talk about all and more, talk about the different clubs and the talented players that they've got that are playing in the side. So it gives us a chance, as you heard before, to talk and mention club rugby and clubs out there. And of course, the, the, the talented opportunity there that um, maybe the guys get spotted. Let's look at some of the highlights now from the uh, Cape Rugby TV 7 side as they progress through to the finals at the Strand Pioneer 7s. It wasn't a bad start. We've got two more to go. We can still be up to another eight points here and we ready to go for the quarterfinal. The reputation that I'm holding. You never know the oh, eyes out here that come in that have a review. So, okay, when it comes to the collision, show your reputation and make sure you keep it up high. Okay. Shift the point. 
the, to the boys a little bit of an aftermatch. Look there. That's Geert. This is what Sevens. Yes. Sevens rugby is all about. It's about social, it's community. Ishmael Dolly, our manager. Paul Delford, our uh, coach. Morgan Newman, our captain. Yes. What a vibe. And it, it's so nice for the Cape Rugby side to come to the Strand Pioneers tournament. Because this way, we can talk more about the Strand Pioneers tournament. The Sevens Rugby in Western Province, only going up. Oh. And it's made a black semi-final. Yes, this one is very done. And it will be... Yeah, the team's doing well, I think. Uh, we surpassed our, uh, our, our expectations, I think, in the final now. And there it is. It's the final of the Strand Pioneer Sevens. And who would have thought? Another team has been put together out of super uh, superstars in club rugby to make a really great seven side. Limit our mistakes, and um, I think we can give these guys a go again. Second time round in the final, so uh, hopefully this off will go our way. Great stuff there. A lot of fun there from the uh, Cape Rugby TV Seven side, and uh, yeah. That's exactly what it is that we uh, expected from them. Morgs, were you a bit surprised though? I mean, uh, you arrived there, you had your first game, uh, you lost that. It seems like there's a pattern here now, but when we went out to buy lunch for the guys, um, we did think though that hey, maybe we got a bit big for our boots here. Yeah, we spoke about it before, you know. I mean, you know, with the Village of Super 7s, it, it was a case of, you know, winning the first game and losing the second one. And now all of a sudden, it's, you lose the first one and, you know, the guys get to know each other, they feel each other out a little bit. I, I could see in the warm-up before, the, before our first game, there was a little bit of tension, guys a little bit nervous to playing for the Cape Rugby TV team for the first was there, time. Well, I mean, was there uh, any moment, at any time during the day, you thought, uh, after three games, we'll be going home? Look, I was, after the first game, I must say, I thought, well, I mean, like you say, I was going to buy some food for the guys. I really thought, yes, we're in a bit of trouble here now, especially with the reputation that was so high after Super 7s. I thought we might just let it slip, you know. And then in the second and third game, the guys just came together and really played. I mean, you know, again, it shows if you put, some, put good players together, have a feel for each other, all of a sudden the results will come. And eventually when they started expressing themselves and Paulie brought in the attitude of, you know, we're here to have fun and, and really just, you know, express yourself, then the results really came, you know. And you saw there, guys like Talib Johnson with, you know, speeches out wide, Burton, you know, these guys are all quality players, so I'll be looking how closely to see what they do sort of coming the league. How much of a, how much of a disappointment was it when you, you realised that your second game, because obviously you've never, the team has never played together, which is kind of ironic that a team can do so well that never played together, but yet if they coach smartly just on the day and have a few runs, they can actually do quite well. Kind of throws the, the, the training textbook out the, out, the, out the window a little bit. But how much was it of a disappointment was it when All Saints didn't arrive for, for the game and you didn't have a second game? No, it is a massive distraction, you know, I mean, because we, we came there prepared for three games. For, you know, you're going to definitely play three games in your pool. And you know that from those three games, you've got to win at least two in order to go through. So we knew that we'd lost the first one. The second two were vitally important for us to get to the quarterfinals and we'll know who we'll play in the quarterfinals coming up there too. So, you know, you don't play that second game, but you take the points, but you, you actually don't want the points. You more want the, the, the more that actually playing together and yeah. getting the feel of each other leading up to the quarterfinals. So, unfortunately, we only had two games before the quarterfinals, which was a little bit of a distraction, but I mean, look, at uh, we've got a few injuries in the semifinals, so you always think if there was one more game, well, how would the injuries have then gone then? So, no, look, it worked out in the end, but it is a massive distraction if you, if you, when you're preparing for a tournament and you, yeah. you know you're going to play three games. Right, so it was, it was a very good day, and of course the guys had all the food and the snacks and the deep heat and uh, strapping that they needed. Uh, I realized we didn't have a physio there on the day. Next thing, we need a little bit of massaging, because I was running on the side of the field. It was very strenuous uh, with the camera and making sure that everybody was happy and I kind of felt like I needed a bit of a back rub there. Anyway, we're time for us to take an ad break and when we come back, we'll catch up with some of the losing captains and coaches of the uh, Western Province Zebras and the Cape Rugby side and uh, see what the boys had to say. And of course, uh, handover of the trophy. We'll be back with you in a sec. So, uh, yes, uh, losing captain and coach first at the Strand Pioneers. That was, of course, uh, 
a proud moment. I think there's never been a team that, happy, that was that happy to uh, lose, uh, actually. Paul Delport and, of course, the captain, Morgan Newman. Right, ladies and gentlemen, this is, of course, the Strand Pioneers uh, Sevens Tournament here in Strand. And once again, the Cape Rugby TV team has come out and um, through an overnight success, once again, absolutely had a fantastic time and again into the finals. Of course, the uh, losing captain of the Cape Rugby TV Seven sides with me, Springbok Sevens Rugby player, um, Paul Delport. Or should I say, you're actually the coach. I keep getting it wrong. Paulie, how was it today? Uh, it's a fantastic experience, Japs. Great for the, for the people of Strand and Gordon's Bay to come out. I think the guys all really, really enjoyed the tournament. And again, congrats to Ricky and the province side. Fantastic to see Province putting a putting a seven setup together, seven structure. I think that's the future of the game, and it's great to see them getting better and better. Did you think we could do it again? Uh, after the first two games, no. <laughs> but the guys, they're such a we, we had such a talented group of players. The guys, I think you you find your feet a bit quicker in yeah. sevens, and as the guys found their feet, they they got to know each other a bit better, and they really came through well in the end. They put through, put in some great performances. And of course, all Saints who didn't rock up made it a little bit difficult for you guys because you didn't have that that sort of warm up match. And this is the first time you've you've met these play or not met these players, but had an opportunity to play with them. That second game was an important game. Yeah, it, uh, it was. We all uh, got together at about 10 o'clock this morning. It's the first time the guys actually met each other. We realised we didn't have enough. We had to borrow some of the Marty's boys. Um, so yeah, I think that the, the, the first game's always tough, and the second game's kind of one where you 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 kind of get your, your you get your straps, you get into your straps, and you and you find things a little bit easier. But again, the, the guys came out after missing that second one, and they, and they played they played very very well. Fantastic stuff, Paulia. Once again, congratulations. You're, we can see why you're a Springbok Sevens player. Fantastic stuff. Well done with the team. Uh, thanks so much, Jeff. Morgs, I was just asking Paulie, uh, the coach, uh, uh, did you think we could do it again? Yeah, look, I mean, Paulie hit the nail on the head, I think. You know, it's obviously difficult. You're losing our first game quite, uh, quite, quite comfortably. But yeah, I mean, as it is, you know, the guys come together from all different clubs and they come together and once they gel after two or three games, then, then they start, you know, the, the moves start to work and, and the tries start to come. So yeah, I mean, hats off to the boys. They've come out and literally never knew each other's names this morning and now they're, they're best mates for life. So it's good to see and then hopefully this Cape team can just keep growing. I mean, isn't it just incredible how one can actually perform if you're just enjoying rugby? Because these guys have never had one single practice together. But it just goes, once again, if you, you can play really good rugby if you're prepared to just have a jaw. Yeah, I mean, look, um, this morning, you know, Pauli said that the motto for the day will be just you come out, you have fun, and you make sure you've got a smile on your face for the 15 minutes that you're out there. And the guys did that, and it's amazing what you can achieve, you know. The guys really, you know, took a, put their bodies on the line all day, and yet to the final, we lost uh, to a good Western Province side, yet the guys were still smiling, and that's, I think that's what rugby's all about at the end of the day. Yeah, so our uh, losing captain and coach there at the Strand uh, Sevens, um, and uh, we managed to make it into the final. But, of course, uh, the winning coach at... Uh, at the Strand Sevens Pioneers was Ricky Peterson, who coached the Western Province Zebras on the day. Let's catch up with Ricky. Right, folks, once again, I'm with Ricky Peterson. He's the coach of the Western Province Rugby uh, Sevens side. Ricky, fantastic stuff. Well done. You've done it again. Well, um, firstly, let me say uh, thanks to Tariq and his, and his, and his team at Strand Pioneers. Okay, the second year with this tournament, it's getting bigger and bigger. And what these guys must understand is that I've got a slight advantage with my team over here. Added a couple of new faces, but when it comes to sevens, it's about building continuity. And when you get continuity, you get results. So the same with any club team, but it makes it easier for me as a Western Province Sevens coaches. I saw a lot of talent. Yeah. That is what it's about. Okay, and we are taking sevens to a new height at Western Province. JP, you know that. There's been working, uh, we're working uh, quite hard behind the scenes, and you're one of the guys that really want to market this thing, promote this thing, get it out there. And it's happening. It's happening. It started here at Stand Pioneers. Next week it's West Bank. Then it's the Cape Town Tens. And uh, a couple of weeks <laughs> after that, it, 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 doesn't, doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't stop. We are not going to be left behind. 2016 Olympia to Western Province is going to be one of the top, you, if not, now let me rephrase that. You're the be the top best. union, the best. <laughs> Definitely the most excited, talkative coach in Western Province rugby, but great job there. Ricky Peterson is putting in an enormous effort. Um, yeah, and, and being able to, I think, Morgs, being able to look at uh, some of the guys in the, in the, in the Cape rugby side, um, quite helpful because it gives him a wider range uh, of players to look at because it's difficult to go out there scouting from club to club to club. And if, if we can pick a few guys to have a run, um, it, it helps you quite a lot. 
Yeah, it's nice when you, especially our team consisted of 90% of guys that have, have had, who were playing in our team, who didn't have teams that were playing in the tournament. So it worked out perfectly for him. You know, I think on display there must have been about 14 teams and then, you know, call it 20 teams if you want to take. We took the best of, of, guys, of teams that weren't there, you know, the SK Worms that weren't there, Salarians that weren't there. And, and, you know, and a few others, hands and hearts that weren't there. I got a few of their players. So, yeah, I mean, you know, Ricky was really impressed with what he saw from the Cape Rugby TV team, as well as one or two individuals, you know, in the other team. So, no, it's a perfect platform team to come and, uh, and have a little scout, you know. Yeah, and I, and I must just say also, um, for the coaches out there who were prepared to have some of their players team uh, play in the uh, Cape Rugby side, uh, which, of course, gives an opportunity to to those players and have, gives an opportunity to them recognize and gives an opportunity for their club to be spoken about then to those coaches and chairmen of the uh, clubs the, the likes of uh, Macassar and Tigerberg and you know the, the fact that they got the foresight to, to bring the guys out there it was sad that hands and hearts were, were there, not there on the day I know that they had to pull out but uh, you know they, they're also doing really well in the sevens but uh, a, a real disappointment that when All Saints didn't arrive there but you know I think as the, the sevens uh, tournaments get more professional um, and get more active we'll, we'll probably start seeing a little bit more consistency but anyway it was of course um, a trophy handover time and it was the Western Province uh, rug, uh, Western Province the Zebras who walked away with the, the trophy on the day and of course Tariq van der Ross and his sponsor that organized it and uh, Ruan Mostert the captain of uh, the uh, Western Province uh, seven side the Zebras there taking the trophy let's catch up with the award ceremony Tariq, um, a great tournament. Thanks, JP. Yeah, our goal was to kickstart the, the rugby season in the Western Cape. Our goal was to get 2,000 people at the field, and I think uh, we achieved it. Yeah, uh, St. George's did well, Makassar did well, Helder. Yeah, Makassar, of course. Makassar yeah. were telling me the whole day that I was <laughs> talking about Makassar all day. <laughs> yeah, they got a good side. Helderberg always got a good side. Yeah. Um, Australian United defending champs did well uh, yeah. out in the quarters. But, uh, you know, in the Helderberg, we want to create a Nelson Mandela Bay area where, where you talk about Helderberg, you talk about Sevens. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think, um, you know, at Strand Pioneers with Makassar, with Helderberg, with Ricky, uh, we're heading in that direction. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to ask one of your sponsors now, um, Ruan Ferreira Spa, who's been sponsoring, uh, of course, Strand Pioneers. And we've, we saw you guys from Spa, uh, I think the Cinnamon Spa down the road, where you were involved at the, at, at the awards. You're always keenly supporting Strand Pioneers. So I've just got to first say, you know, congratulations on that. Well done for supporting community rugby. Um, uh, let me quickly speak to uh, you then, just from a, from a supporting community rugby and especially Strand Pioneers. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, JP, um, thank you for the opportunity and thank you for you guys and you guys' involvement here. Yeah? Um, we always say that spa is in the people's business, um, selling food. So, yeah, if there's an opportunity to give back to the, to the community and to be involved in our community, we value that highly and uh, we grab the opportunity to be involved with our local communities and to give back. That's what it's about. Okay, let's uh, turn our attention now to the captain of uh, the Western Province, Ruan Mosert, Mossi, as he's known by his friends and of course fans as well. Mossi, how did you feel? Um, yeah, it was great. Geweest. It's an unbelievable tournoi. First of all, thank you for the tournoi. Um, I think for the fans that are here, I can even the old ones that now have been It's more than the people so by the old see by a club tournoi. It's my unbelievable geweest. And um, yeah, net, then when you span out, it was a great tournoi geweest. The old ones have been hard working, what up led to the to the tournoi. And um, hard work pays off. And the old ones are there to bring there to bring the end. So, yeah. Well, listen, that trophy is now yours. I think uh, Ruan can it for you now. Here, so congratulations, right, right, right. the winners of the Strand uh, Pioneers Sevens Tournament, Western Province Zebras. <laughs> there we go. Right, folks, the Strand uh, Pioneers Sevens Tournament. This is what we came to. It's been a fantastic uh, event. Of course, Cape Rugby TV coming out here, and uh, it could not have been. Uh, made possible without the support, of course, the fans in the Strand area. I think with, with fans like this in the entire Helderberg region, you can't go wrong. So the fans from Gastro, Salorians, Makassar, Eerstrophy, Strand United, Strand Pioneers, really, you guys need a big round of applause from Cape Rugby TV. From our side, we'll see you guys in a sec.
had to do a little bit of coaching there for the, the Zebras to give us the aftermatch cheer. So well done there to Western Rose Rugby and uh, for doing so well. And of course, there was some prize money on offer on the day. 6,000 Rand prize money went to the uh, Zebras and 2,500 Rand to the Cape Rugby TV7 side. And on, uh, on our side, we're going to try and boost that uh, uh, Sevens uh, prize money, the 2,500. We're going to ask uh, you guys out there to add on to the 2,500 Rand so that we can donate that 2,500 Rand prize money to a charity in the strand area of course the seven side went out there and won the uh the prize money in the strand area so i think it's only fair that uh, we choose a charity in the strand area but we got two and a half thousand rand prize money to start with and what we want you guys to do is uh and we'll let you know on social media is help us bolster the two and a half thousand rand and uh, we'll tell you more about that a little bit uh, on social media and next week about the charity we've chosen and what it is that we've chosen to buy for that charity. So if we can take two and a half thousand rand and turn it into 10,000 rand, hopefully through your kind donations, then, then we uh, think that our uh, Sevens tournament would have been more than just uh, giving players an opportunity to play, but would also give back to the community and a, a, a charity, a worthwhile charity in the area. Um, ben, let me just bring you in here before we go to an ad break. Um, in terms of um, uh, match regulations on the day, um, if one talks about sevens and we talk about fifteens, what are the rules around the administrative side? What are the rules around uh, fans on the side of the field? Are there any rules with regards to fencing? Uh, do there have to be ropes up? How does one control that space? Yeah, JV, the only thing that we as uh, match officials don't want, we don't want anybody else than the players in the, in the, in the playing enclosure. Uh, it's sometimes difficult to manage. Most clubs do... But let me stop you. For, for the benefit of the viewers out there, what is the playing the, enclosure? The playing enclosure is the area that's been uh, marked out uh, uh, except the field of play. The field of play will be the wide lines. Yeah. And then usually about three metres behind that, that's playing enclosure. So you don't want any, any spectators... Uh, then the players deserves management in those areas. Uh, some fields well controlled, but some fields we do struggle to, 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 to get that control. Well, I must say that at, at the Strand Sevens, uh, Strand Pioneers, I keep calling it the Strand, at the Strand uh, Pioneers Sevens, it was very well organized. It was great to have the, uh, someone on the microphone just reminding the crowd every now and then to step back. And it was, it was really fantastic. But you, sometimes you just can't stop the fans. I mean, they just want to get close to the game. And, and I think that, uh, anyway, it was a great day. Fans loved it. We're taking an ad break. Remember, you can keep your cell phones handy and you can put yourself in line to win that Evox before, during, and after hamper. That's coming up a little bit later during the show. Double three. 280 and the key word that you need to uh, SMS there is EVOX so keep your cell phones handy and you'll be able to SMS to the number 33280 and you can win yourself the before during and after hamper we'll take an ad break we come back we'll take a look at what happened in the world of HSBC 7s back with you in a sec So yeah, let's take a look at the HSBC 7s. And as we know, um, Carl Brown, who was recently on the show with us, captained the HSBC 7s to at least the Springbok 7s, the Blitzbocker, captained them to victory in Las Vegas as they went up against the world's best and once again achieved top ranking in uh, the, the World 7s rankings. Let's take a look at the Blitzbocker progress there. As we see there, the Blitzbocker first played against Wales. They beat them in the group stage, 43 points to nil. Then 29 nil against Canada, which is doing much better. 19-7 against Kenya. I'm sure Paul True will be uh, feeling the pain a little bit on that one. Quite a personal moment, I suppose. In the quarterfinal, Blitzbocker took on Argentina, 36 nil. And then they went up against uh, Samoa in the semifinal. And then, of course, the massive final against New Zealand, who were ranked at um, number uh, one until that um, loss to, to South Africa and South Africa then pipping them by just one point. Let's take a look now at the world rankings and there you see South Africa are firmly on top. Well, not so firmly, at least by one point, but they have gone to the top of the HSBC 7 standings now uh, with 78 points. So South Africa now ranked the world's best seven side. New Zealand in second place on 77, followed by Fiji on 56. There's quite a big gap there between Fiji and New Zealand. And then, of course, um, England, Samoa, Australia, Argentina, Kenya, uh, France, and Wales. Now, um, that's of course, those are, of course, the rankings there if you just look at the top 10. But uh, it does go on quite a lot further. And I think Uruguay sitting right at the bottom as the last team. But a good result there. Um, I'm sure Paul Delport, who would have loved to be on the show today, and unfortunately, his commitments there with the Springbok 7th, Paul, he would have loved to be talking about this result. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's amazing, you know, just looking through the results, to, to concede 14 points through a tournament of 
what is it, five or six games, it's a, it's a serious achievement. I mean, you know, they clearly the Springboks have, the Springboks, the Blitzbok have pride themselves on defence and, and, you know, defence is teamwork and I think I think that's what, um, you know, Neil Powell has instilled in this team is he's ext uh, uh, sort of a vast amount of teamwork and they're not the biggest guys but they're definitely the quickest and they're definitely the most physical. So, no, unbelievable achievement and, you know, it's great to see that the, the, the Springboks 17 is doing so well, especially when this transition phase with losing a coach and, you know, the coach and the assistant coach both left. Yeah. And, you know, to continue those results, is some it takes some serious hard work. So, you know, an experience of Neil Powell who's played there for five, six years, who's now the coach, I think he's, you know, he's bringing a lot of attitude and, and he's extremely calm behind the, you know, behind the sidelines. And so the guys had a couple of injuries there. Um, Branko Dupree had to quite a hard knock. He had to come off the field. They had to go for a concussion test. Um, one of the other players also came off. Uh, I mean, it, it was a tough game. Uh, it, it was no, no uh, small feat. I mean, and I think Kyle Brown really managed to keep the team composed. No, look, Sevens is becoming a physical battle now. You know, it's, it's no longer that sort of airy freely rugby that we used to. So, you know, to, for Kyle to, to have played so much time, with Kyle who spent so much time on the field and staying, you know, uninjured because he's been out for so long. And then also, you know, guys like Sabellis and Atlu went off at one stage. All these guys that were nursing niggles and to, to get a result like that in the final against a good, very, very good New Zealand side is, um, is extremely confident going into the next leg. Yeah, good side, the New Zealand guys. But uh, I must say, that little, that little uh, shimmy that uh, uh, Kyle Brown, where he just popped the ball through and it ended up in Van Cox's hands and he went over for the try. That, that thought, I thought that was just a, a moment of sheer genius. You know, their, their, eye, their hand eye coordination at, at Sevens must be so good. Speaking about the Sevens, of course, uh, we saw a couple of South African referees there, Brent. Uh, Rasta, Rasta Venga, I think, is. Uh, I never get the surname right. I always get the first name right. It's easy. It's Rasta. Um, not like Rasta Dumisani, which is. Probably Rush to Misani. Um, but yeah, uh, he's, he's doing pretty well. He takes well, con good control of the game, Rasta. Yeah, Rasta is a very competent referee. I think at that level, um, he wants to move on to, to, to bigger things because that's the foundation for the guys to move on to the IOB test panels. Um, um, Rasta up there with one of the top performers at each, of all op tournaments that he participate in. And then, of course, our local guy, Marius van der Westen, is just. Uh, uh, I think he's sometimes still thinking it's a fair detail just refereeing, but it's not that easy. I can but uh can natuurlijk know he's only any any super fifteen ref. I he's not opening with Panel for Super Fifteen yeah and that can be yes at the videos. Who come means as a sky rechter, who come you up in panel? The sons are panel um any super fifteen at the uh the ref. The uh that is a long story from I can only begin from Pan Begin Sky Chatter's copy for per time is a work at Kawa Ip. Ma uh yeah but not till you your your land can nominate work. En dan uh, waar André Watson een groot rol gaan speel. En dan wordt die wedstrijd die ons wordt bijgeanalyseerd. Die wedstrijd vandaag, als ons oor in Havik Rakkie kyk, sien jy skytsetters oor die hele wereld, ja. uh, die net van kanaal uh, oor te spring. En uh, die ons wordt word daar geëvalueer en daarvan wordt uh, word daar besluit, denk hulle die man is goed, maar jou eie land en jou eerst nomineer, om denk dat jy goed genoeg is. So hoeveel skytsrechters is daar van die verskillende lande? By die toernooie, hulle, by die sevens bly het, bly het, bly het tamelijk constant, uh, want dit is een groep waar, waar my meer wil bly werk, um, ook nou met die oog, wie lombiese spelen wat, wat een beetje meer as een jaar is, so die ammense probeer uh, 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 nie gereeld in het maar al die speel, al die, die skysatters gaan ook nie na al die toernooie toe nie, om vir meer skysatters geleentheid te gee om op hy vlak uh, 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 op te treed. En, en, en uh, 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 net met die conference story, jy, met die conference story kan jy natuurlijk binnen jou eie land uh, ref, uh, as jy skysrechter is van Zuid-Afrika, maar um, uh, as jy travel, dan as hulle nou tegen mekaar speel, kan jy nie doen nie, of dis nee, die ander manier om nie? Nee, die, ander, die internationale rugby laat doen hy aanstelling, want ons eie land hanteer Zuid-Afrika, is hy rugby, ander is die kantoor het, het self, uh, maar in, internationaal moet jy, moet jy uitgenooi word uh, om te blaas en daarna, ek weet nie, jy moet perform daar is baie druk op skysetters daar hulle fiks het met baie, baie hoog is om die rede die spoed so vinnig is as ek net vinnig kan vat op saterdags uh, op sondags en finaal, sondag aand op maandag ochtends en finaal jy praat uh, nou natuurlijk van die, van die Waasli Cup nee, 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 ek praat nou van, van die Sevens oor die Sevens finaal, ja dit, dit is baie vinnig, Waasli Cup is ook vinnig geweest maar as jy net die Sevens finaal kyk as mense redder waar vinnig gaan kyk hoe die, 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 die tackle raak scenario gespeel moet word en geblaas word, ja. was die finale perfecte voorbeeld van hoe dit uh, gespeel moet word. Ja, nee, dit, 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 dit lijkt fantastisch. Ik denk die ouwens het definitief nogal baie um, 
Hulle kan baie oor ondervinding daar so optel, en baie fitness. Alright, so there, yes, lots of very, very fit referees. Uh, just to go back to the Sevens uh, fixtures coming up, don't forget the West Bank Sevens, and you can see it there on your screen right now, the West Bank Sevens tournament is coming up on the 1st of February, that's this coming uh, Saturday, and uh, that is happening um, out in uh, Marmersbury, you can ta contact there Edwin Hoogaard, uh, Hoberg at least, to find out more, there's a total prize money there of um, 22,000 Rand, that's not 22 Rand that you see on the screen, that's 22,000 Rand, and then a first prize there of for the winning uh, team of 12,500 Rand. Let's quickly take a look at the West Bank Group 7s uh, who will be taking a part there. Uh, a lot of teams there. West Bank, Northerns, Mbikwen United, Eerste, I think that's Eerste of here, um, second, and there's NNK, just to mention a couple, Mamre, Vix, Helderberg, Abbotsdale, Hands and Hearts, great to see Hands and Hearts uh, playing there. UWC, Mamre, Valiersdorp, Durbel, Whistling, Wales Correction Services, Valiersdorp again, and Peniel Villages. So, stacks and stacks of sides there playing in the the uh, West Bank Seven, so you want to get out there. But of course, the monster challenge that's been uh, launched is the Community Cup Challenge. Right, this is the Community Cup Challenge that's happening between Western Province Rugby and the Boerland, and this was um, launched on um, uh, Monday night at uh, Newlands, where the president of Western Province Rugby and the president of Boerland Rugby were uh, at a press conference launching the Community Challenge. Now, this Community Challenge is absolutely fantastic. Four teams from Western Province, four teams from uh, Boerland. Uh, going head to head uh, and uh, we, I think it's going to be an absolutely f amazing tournament in terms of uh, giving opportunity for the teams that are not playing in the Community Cup or in uh, the uh, Varsity Cup. Let's take a look at the teams now from Boerland and uh, the uh, Western Province region. There you see it on the screen right now. Group A is Durbel, uh, Horston, Tigerberg and Ceres. And then in Group B it's uh, Worcester, Villages, taking on SK, or not taking on, but SK, Warmer, Saldana and Balha. But if you look at the province teams there, it's Durbel and Tigerberg. They're in Group A. And the province teams in Group B is SK, Warmers and Balha. First round kicks off on the 1st of March. Those are your community challenge groups. They have now been called. So uh, we're looking forward to supporting the Western Province rugby uh, sides that are playing in the community challenge. Let's catch up now with the highlights from the press conference on Monday night as they launch the Community Challenge. Welcome to all the visitors to Newlands. The purpose of this competition is to strengthen the relationship between Western Province Rugby and Borland Rugby, since both unions form part of the DHL Stormers franchise, but also to promote and enhance club rugby in these unions. Ladies and gentlemen, for me, it is a newborn baby born in the Western Cape about the rugby. It's a long time due that we as uh, neighbour unions coming together and put some, something for club rugby. And if you're taking the community cup, the only one club or two clubs can participate. So that's why we've talked about this uh, coming together and get the four main clubs after the Community Cup and the Varsity Cup coming together to play against the uh, Bulland Union and the Western Province Union. Ah, it was Durbel, Austin, Tegeberg and Ceres. In Group B it was Wooster Villages, SK Warmers, Saldana and Biala. Baie sterk van hulle allemaal. Anton Lambrachs, Captain of Tegeberg. Chris van Rensburg, Captain of Durbel. Ein Koch, Captain of Ceres. Van Zoswa, Captain van Saldana. Adnan Osman, Captain SKW. Mark Willard, Captain of Bella. The Alton Boysen, Captain of Austin. Uh, Dwayne Walscott, Worcester Willis. We gaan aan the end of the day say for ourselves this was, this was good to see such a competition. We see you in the end to see you in action. Thank you. Thank it was, of course, the launch of the Community uh, Challenge that uh, took place on Monday night and uh, a lot of excitement, a lot of media were out there to, to cover the launch, so I think this is a fantastic opportunity between um, Western Province Rugby and Boerland. Of course, we managed to catch up there with the President of Western Province Rugby as well, and he looks very excited about this challenge, and he, as he says, he is planning on taking on uh, the, the Boerland club. So there's a good vibe between Western Province and Boerland, but certainly these guys are going to go uh, hell for leather as they take each other on. Let's catch up there with Thelo Wakefield, the president of Western Province Rugby. Today we have the launch of the Community Cup Challenge uh, and I'm looking forward to a great uh, period ahead. Uh, we're launching this thing tonight and the games will start on the 1st of March up till the, the 29th and I'm so excited because we are from our clubs, we have Bella, we have Durbanville, we have SK Warmers and we have Tigerberg. 
and we rely on our four clubs to blossom them in this uh, <laughs> competition and sh uh, show them that we are the best as far as uh, club rugby is concerned. Um, I'm going to uh, stay away from a few uh, provincial matches and be there alongside the field to cheer for our guys and I know they're going to do well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I see it now. As a guitarist, I can make my work easier because I can Dat wordt wees voor mijn gereel, want ik hoef te reel niet. En ik denk dat die ouders gaan op een lekker formele manier voor seizoen uh, En ik hoop, ik hoop al die clubs krijgen lekker sterk spannen in die veld zo vroeg in die seizoen. Maar dat is maar moeilijk, dus vroeg in die seizoen voor de meeste clubs. Voor alle in die boerland, voor alle oestijen en goed het. Maar als ze kan lekker sterk spannen krijgen voor oppositie, dan gaan we ons goede rekken zien. Uh, we are looking forward to the challenge, seeing that we were unfortunate in not being able to qualify for this year's Community Cup, so we'll use this as a learning curve and also as preparation for what we'd like to achieve and maybe qualify for the Community Cup 2015. Definitely going to be tough, um, you can see the spirits are quite high already amongst the administrators, so yeah, we're definitely looking forward to kick-off. Yeah, I think it's a great initiative, firstly between Buland and Western Province. And it uh, gives other clubs an opportunity to, to expose themselves on a bigger stage. And we're all looking forward to what's happening in this tournament. Players at, at Tigerberg, they're really excited for the travel. They'll be able to travel again, go out to the communities and just reach out. And I think it's a very good development initiative for, for, the, for the clubs. And I think uh, for pre-season, it's something we should have done long ago. So we're really looking forward to it. See, everybody's very excited there. Nice interviews there from uh, the, 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 some of the, the dignitaries from the various clubs that we're representing on the, the day. So we're looking forward to this, and it's going to be a fantastic tournament as Cape Rugby TV gets behind those four teams in the Community Challenge. And this is uh, going to be truly a community challenge. Right, folks, as I promised earlier on, you win for yourself a uh, Evox hamper. Remember, we're doing the before, the during, and the after. So this is critical for your, your match and your preparation for the league, for the sevens, for whatever it is you're playing, community challenge specifically. Okay, so the first product that you need from Evox Advanced Nutrition is your Cytocrank. This is your pre-training booster. And then, of course, you have your uh, Super Carbo that you're going to use during the uh, game or during your gym session or during your practice session. And then most importantly, as we said before, your rapid recovery. So this is what you're looking for. You're looking for your cytocrank to get you started, your super carbo to get you going, or at least to keep you going, and then your rapid recovery that's going to help you recover immediately after the game to get you to or practice or gym session to get you to your next practice, gym session, or training session, whatever it is. So it's the pre the during and the after. That's absolutely most important. If you want to win yourself this hamper, all you need to do is SMS the number 33280. The answer that you're looking for is there is uh, EVOX, EVOX, that's the word. So just tell us who is the official sports nutrition supplier to Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers. Congratulations to last week's winner, Alton Bergman. Alton walks away with the uh, before, during and after hamper. Congratulations then, Alton. Your prize is on its way to you. Let's take a look now at the results in the Varsity Shield and that happened on Monday. So FNB, UC, or FNB, CUT at least. Uh, in fact, uh, yeah, they uh, came out on top of uh, UKZN 26 25. It was a very close match there. And UWC doing really well, beating University of Fort Hare 26 points to eight. So those were your Varsity Shield results as the Varsity Shield and the Varsity Cup got started last week in the launch. Of course, last week it dissolves a golf course, but the games started on Monday already. Let's look at the fixtures coming up on Monday in the uh, Varsity Cup. NMMU takes on Marty's in PE at uh, 10 to 5. And then, of course, it's UCT up against Pucker. They'll be playing at home ground at 5 o'clock. And then uh, it's uh, Tex up against UJ at uh, 7 o'clock in Pretoria. And then it's um, Vitz take on Schimler's in Bloemfontein at uh, 7. And then in the Varsity Shield, the fixtures there, it's uh, KZN up against uh, Forte. That's played in Durban at 7 o'clock. And then it's home ground advantage for UWC at UWC, a kickoff at uh, 7. So make sure that you join us there. So lots of excitement there um, and uh, the Varsity Cup and the Varsity Shield and uh, a good start there for you Dubs Morgs. Yeah, very good start, you know, I mean, I was very, very impressed. I see some, while I was watching the game, I got some tweets about who to watch and who's going to be playing well. But yeah, I mean, you know, Freddie Miller continues to, to do really well. And the fly off really impressed me. I can't get his name right now, but they really impressed me. So they've got two generals that can direct them around the field and UWC looks like they'll do really well this year. Yeah, I think Freddie Miller was one of, the, once again, Freddie Miller stand out there. Nice to see how, how well he did. But before we go on with, uh, carry on with the Varsity Cup, uh, Ben, let's quickly talk to you about the referees. You've got some referees courses coming up. Um, when, when are these referees courses? How much does it cost? What are the benefits to refereeing? 
JP, yeah, thanks for the opportunity. We sp I've spoken to Danny yesterday. Uh, good news for the people out there. Uh, as from the uh, 8th of February, for the next three weeks, it will be the 15th and the 22nd of February, and if needed another week, we will offer the IV Level 1 course to anybody interested in becoming referees or want to know about the game a little bit more for free. Okay, hang on, hang on. let me stop you there. Okay, that you just say any person can come. Maak nie man, dis iemand van een klap. Ja, wel enig iemand van een klap, wat daar buitenkant is, wat baie graag een scheidsrechter wil word, of ja. scheidsrechterskap betrokken wil wees, want ons in die WP Rijk bied het akkoord aan scheidsrechters. Mm. Hoe minder scheidsrechters hy is, hoe zwakker raak jy gehad, want scheidsrechters, hoe meer hy is, meer competitie is hy net met spanne. So ons wil baie graag van hierdie, met hierdie project, in samenwerking met Kuip Rijk by TV, uh, sukses maak, mense uitnooi, ons kan enig getal hanteer, um, ons wil hee, dat mense moet meer leer van Rijk by Reels, meer reel uh, leer rondom skuitsetterskap. Een van die, een van die, ek dink een van die dinge, hoe, hoe reed is, hoekom miskien mense nou nie so, so baie skuitsrechters uh, kursusse bijwoon nie, daar, is, daar, daar was voor in die koste betrokke. Maar hierdie kursus, die kursus alleen, jy sê dit is gratis? Die kursus gaan gratis aangebied word, WP Rugby sal betaal vir die AIW Edicator wat gaan aanbied, so dit gaan vir hulle absoluut niks kors nie. Ok, so, um, en wanneer is hierdie kursus? Dit is vanaf die 8 februari, Sochtens 8 uur tot in die Mara 4 uur toe, is een lang kursus, van al die facette van spel word gehanteerd, theoretisch en praktisch, uh, en dis baie, baie, baie um, in sy geven om het bij te woon. Nou, as ek nou na die, die africht, uh, skysrechters kursus kom, um, nou, ek kan natuurlijk dan vir my eie club uh, referee, so die club hoef jy te betaal nie, maar um, ek, ek verstaan, dat, dat is ook een goeie manier om bykie zakgeld te maak. Ja, JP, wat mense nie besef, weet ek aan die, daar is te kost van skuitsheiders, en daar, die mense wat nie goeie sak geld, WP Rugby, self vergoed die skuitsheiders 200 aan te besaal, draag maar af, om betrokken te wees met klap rugby, dus dit kom nie uit jou eie pakket uit nie, na die tijd, kyk die klaps ook goed na ons, as hy goeie versverse, so, maar dis, dis nou eindelijk nog, nog een lekker manier, om bykie sak geld te doen, jy gaan doen jou skuitsrechters kursus, dis gratis, dis is verniet, so nou as jy gekwalify as een skuitsrechter, jy doen, jy doen drie van hierdie, en as jy nou daar, dan kan jy natuurlijk besluit, of jy nou gaan skuitsrechter word, en, en, en soveel, uh, sovoorts, en dan na dit kan jy op zaterdag, uh, 200 rand sak geld maak, Ja, ons moet net duidelijk stel, jy kan nie net na die kurs en sommer daar gaan blaas en sê, as jy jy moet afleer, want die landse wet laat het ook toe, dat jy eens moet gaan afleer en jy nodig aan die kurs en moet samen dit doen. Ja. Maar daar is vir jou geleentheid om sak geld te maak, nie net op klapvlak, nie op skolevlak, baie van my skuitsheiders blaas woensdag maar aan haar skole, saterdag ochtend in skole, raak nie saterdag maar klap raak nie. As jy die ouwens betaal, is het 200 rand per game? Jy is 200 rand vir die saterdag maar raak, wat as jy junior skuit is, wat jy op het grensreddenskap insluit, want ons beskouw het is deel van opleiding. Ok, so there you go folks, uh, great way for you to make a little bit of pocket money, you want to become a referee, uh, free courses for three weeks at Western Province Rugby, it's one day from 8 o'clock in the morning until 4 o'clock in the afternoon, the course is free, that qualifies you as a referee, then of course you have to affiliate after that, and you can decide if you want to uh, referee and make that pocket money. You it's a no-brainer. I think it's a great opportunity. So free referees courses and we'll be promoting that on your year on Cap Rugby TV. And let's see then after that you do the courses, you join the referee society and then off to after that you can uh, start refereeing. And then let's see if you can put your money where your mouth is if you know that much about rugby. All right, folks, that's a wrap of Cap Rugby TV. We're looking forward to catching you uh, over the weekend at uh, whichever rugby event it is. And... Uh, yeah, and of course, don't forget the Cape Town 10s coming up the uh, following weekend. Uh, the West Bank 7s is coming uh, Saturday. Morgs, uh, nice to have you on the show. We'll catch you again next week, same time, same place. Good to be here. Thanks for having me, James. Ben, yeah, and uh, best of you. And good luck with your skysrechters. Uh, hopefully, we'll have hundreds and hundreds of people by your courses on site. Bye, thank you for your time. And I can't say anything about your self, your contact, or your self, your contact. We can do our own for our own make that we have enough money to get. That's not the only thing. So I'll just say, put your money where your mouth is. Yeah, and yeah, no, we will have the information from the Skysrechters uh, courses on Facebook and on Twitter, sit, so that the people know uh, when they are going to where the courses are and so forth. Right, so wrap from us, folks. Have yourself a fantastic rugby weekend. We'll see you again next week, same time, same place. And don't forget, of course, the repeat of Cape Rugby TV on Saturday mornings at 9am. That's a wrap. Have a good one. Bye-bye.